Welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about the essential Drucker by, you know, whom other than Peter F. Drucker. In case you haven't heard of Mr. Drucker, he's considered one of the greatest business gurus of all time. Now, usually I don't really feel like I learn much from super academic people, but this guy knows his stuff. <laughs> so as you can imagine, he wrote a lot of books in his time. Sadly, he, he died in 2005. But this is sort of a compilation work, so it has tons of golden nuggets, and today we'll just be looking at a few. So first, let's look at a quote from Mr. Drucker. Management is doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. I think this is extremely important as it applies to business. As an entrepreneur, there are ups and downs, and the downs will possibly define you even more than the ups. One time I was having an ethical dilemma and I was afraid to talk to my boss about it because it involved a mistake I made, right? We're all afraid of that. <laughs> uh, first, he asked me, well, Steve, what do you think we should do? I told him what I thought was right, but in a very timid way because I thought he'd be pissed off. And he just said, I agree. I think that's the right thing to do. But I'll never forget what he said next. He said, do the right thing when no one's watching. It's a lot easier to sleep at night. <laughs> this is one of the reasons that this ex-boss of mine is my closest mentor today, and I trust and value what he says. So I encourage you all to really take this to heart, because tough times and difficult decisions will come your way in this lifetime. And I hope you'll all lead by example. Remember that quote, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, the whole point of this knowledge business is to reach an audience and have serious impact on them, right? Then let's make sure that impact is a good one. I think of leadership as kind of the strategy that we use to guide our actions, and management is the tactics that we implement on a daily basis to get those things done. All right, so that's the first golden nugget for today. And, you know, when I say leadership versus management here, it doesn't mean they're at odds with each other. But I think we need to start by being leaders, and then we can be managers. Okay, the other two golden nuggets, I guess there's three. <laughs> the other golden nuggets we'll go over today are the one purpose of business, the two functions of business, and last we'll talk about... Uh, what Mr. Drucker calls the Knowledge Society. All right, ready for the one purpose of business? <laughs> he says it's to create a customer. This is why I'm so obsessed with business. At its heart, business is the concept of bringing two people together in an exchange that leaves both of them better off. I love this. <laughs> why else are we on the planet? If we accept this, then, you know... We want to create customers and we want to help them out. So how do we create a customer? The first and generally considered the easier way is to fill an existing demand. For example, food has always been and always will be in demand. And unless, of course, you know, one day we're all digitized. <laughs> but before grocery stores and before people were even interacting in any kind of market, people wanted food. So if you could find a way to supply it to them, they would pay you in some way for it, right? Pretty, pretty easy concept to grasp. The second and generally much more difficult way is to create demand. A great example of this is the iPhone. I mean, I would call this the product that everyone never knew they needed. <laughs> because until Steve, you know, until Steve Jobs and Apple created the iPhone, no one knew what it was or what it would do. But they convinced us that this was something we needed in our life, and they changed the world because of it. How many people now do you walk down the street and you see just plugged into their iPhone, right? Now, the book says you can create demand through a few things. Innovation, credit, advertising, or salesmanship. And Apple probably did all of these things to get their iPhone out. Uh, an argument can be made that this is a greater accomplishment because you really are shaping the world in your own image, which, by the way, this is my favorite definition of an entrepreneur. 
And I might agree with that, but I recommend we take baby steps. So let's start by finding out what people want and give it to them. And then down the road, who knows what you might create. Okay, what about making a profit? Yes, you need to find a way to make money for the business to survive so that you can continue having customers who are, you know, you're bettering their lives, basically. What about shareholders? Yes, you need to do right by them if you want to stay in the big seat. And what about advancement of society? Yes, that's a great goal as well. But the key point is that all of these are secondary to creating a customer. So just keep that in mind. All right, what are the two functions of business? He says they are marketing and innovation. And let's be sure that these functions, you know, they only exist to drive the purpose that we just went over. So keep the customer in mind the whole time. First, let's look at marketing. Quoting the book, he says that true marketing starts with the customer's needs, not forcing your products on people. Drucker says that the focus should be not on what do we want to sell, but on what does the customer want to buy? And that the aim of marketing is to basically make selling, this is a tough word, superfluous. That is a quote, otherwise I don't think I'd use that word. <laughs> but the point is make it, you know, completely unnecessary. This almost makes me think that he's saying, you know, trying to create demand is wrong. But I don't think it can be that black and white. If you create demand by making customers aware of a product, like Apple did, and then they want it, then the same goal is achieved, right? You're giving them what they want. Okay, what about innovation? First off, he says above all, innovation is not invention. So don't confuse the two. In other words, it doesn't have to do with technology. It has to do with economics. This is highlighted in the third and fourth of these four ways that I kind of interpreted, you know, the book says that there are, these are the ways to innovate. So one, you can make a product cheaper. Two, you can make a better product. Three, you can make a different product that actually creates a new outcome for the customer. And four, you can find a new use for an existing product. Interestingly, he, he does say that the most, or you know, he thinks that the most productive of these is number three, and giving the customer something new. In a way, again, this kind of disagrees with the focus on the customer, but <laughs> it's never that black and white, right? So I think wait, what he's basically saying here is he does recognize the importance of advancing society and improving our lives overall. But the focus, you know, still needs to be on what, what do people want? What does the customer want? Give it to them. Okay, and the last nugget today, let's go over what Drucker called the knowledge society. The context of this is that it's a paradigm shift from the industrial society, where the value that people had was their physical labor. As machines do more and more physical work for us, we're shifting more to using our brains instead of our brawn, right? That's pretty obvious and evidenced over the past few years. Um, in the future, <laughs> who knows? Machines might be doing so much more mental work for us that we'll end up in a completely different society. You know, maybe a, a spiritual society. Who knows? You know, only the future will tell. But one of my big takeaways from this concept is that opportunity is greatly increased for everyone because knowledge is so readily available with google alone you know what can't you learn about these days one thing drucker says is that in this society the employers will need knowledge workers which is what he calls them more than the workers need them and that's what we're doing right and that's why i call these knowledge businesses that we're working on we're leveraging the value of our knowledge. And we can become financially independent this way and live the lives that we really want. And, you know, in other words, stick it to the corporations and show these people, hey, we really do have value. And, and these people agree with us on that. <laughs> the other big takeaway is that because of the increased opportunity, there will be increased competition. Because knowledge is so available, there's no excuse for what he calls non-performance. 
So this is why I'm excited for all of you. Who, you know, you're not twiddling your thumbs. Instead, you're taking action and you're taking time and you're taking, you know, using energy to really build the future that you want. All right, I know this stuff is really dense. <laughs> Uh, that's one of the reasons I try to sum it all up in one of these these fun summaries here. But remember, you can watch this video as many times as you want, and I, I really do encourage you to read the book. You don't have to do it all at once. You know, when it's a dense book like this, I think sometimes people get too intimidated by it. Just, you know, just read a chapter here and there and let these fundamental concepts sink in. They're really going to benefit you. So today's summary, uh, obviously, um, this is really testing my artistic ability. <laughs> so in case you can't see what's going on here, I have a brain over a bicep, basically. This is brains over brawn, right? <laughs> and the point is, we need to embrace the continued rise of this knowledge society that he refers to. And we need to find a way to create value with our brains if we want to live the life that we want. Okay? And on to the exercise, the most important part. <laughs> comment below to solidify this stuff in your brain and, and share this with as many people as you want. You know, comment on other people's stuff too so we can get some really constructive dialogue going. Number one, how are you going to create a customer? You know, are you going to create supply or fill demand. Those are kind of the two big differentiators. Number two, are you stronger in marketing or innovation? And how are you gonna make sure that the other one is strong enough? You know, are you gonna are you gonna learn about it? Are you gonna delegate it to somebody else? Or are you gonna do both of these? And number three, do you think the shift to a knowledge society is a good or bad thing and why? And I'm going to leave that one that vague. I really want to hear what, what conversation this might spur. <laughs> all right, so think how you can use all these concepts to improve your business and your life overall. And I'll see you all in the next one.